Hi guys and welcome to my review and today we're at Aston Park Fishery on Bill's Pond and we are into the first fish of the day. It's like a little left one um, on the corn and uh, we're just feeding four mil pellets fishing corn to the other side. A nice and simple method, really light gear um, and it's just lovely on these little snake, uh, snake lakes. And the good thing is about <laughs> it's going absolutely ballistic. There's a, there's a small possibility that it's fouled up to itself because they don't they wouldn't normally go like this. I wouldn't have thought, um, but this is this is one thing that can happen when you are fishing up to islands. You can get the odd, the odd foul looker, but it's been a fantastic start. We've looked around um, the tackle shop. It's beautiful and lovely cafe on on site. And then we just just got the gear down and sort of set up, and we're, without very little amount of time, we're into the first fish of the day. And I've got super light elastic on today, with it being. A really sort of small intimate little venue it's got seven ponds all different types you can have big fish uh, if you want to go for the bigger lakes and the feeder lakes there's loads to go at um, but you know I've just put the light gear on this is a, a as you can see a, a six elastic uh, reactor car which I'm not bothered about it taking a time to get in I, I, I just it's a little cap actually I, I just want to have a little bit of fun um, and that's what today is all about. And he's not foul up, he's up straight in the lid. It's just, I thought it was an F1. I mean, it's not, it's a little carp and he's hooked beautifully inside the lid. Let's get that hook out for him. Thing is, with these, these QM1s, when they go in, they go in. And when they're tiny, they're also very difficult to get out. <laughs> there we go. Beautifully hooked. Hold him up. It's a lovely little start. Little mirror carp, as you can see. Beautiful condition. Um, we'll put him back in there. And like I said, today's today's fishing is just simplicity at its best. It's just so, so simple, and that's sometimes what fishing needs to be. And fishing this snake lake, we've got a very, very, very shallow over, overside, so it is super shallow. You can see fish swirling on it actually now. There's, it's very shallow out there. We've probably got 18 inches, uh, and we're actually slightly off the bank because it goes down to probably around six inches. Uh, and I'm just putting sort of. 20 or so pellets in there um, and a single grain of corn and nice and easy set up and I've left the band on there if I'm honest um, in case we want to try four mil pellets uh, you could take the uplink off there's no problem with that but as you see from there once you've got the corn put up against the side of it it doesn't really do any difference uh, and, and they still take it with, with no worries whatsoever um, and uh, I've, I've made up some slop, um, so we may fish uh, later on, shallow, uh, slightly in front of us. Um, I was going to feed it on a far bank, and I changed my mind. Um, yeah, it, we, we've just, I feel that'll be a nice hand throwable ball kind of range in the middle of the pond. Sorry, hiccups. we found a nice bit of, as the slope comes down, there's a nice little small shelf um, and that's where we, we've positioned the bait. Um, we are getting a little bit of left to right wind which is a bit of a nightmare but you know that, that can't be helped. So, sometimes when you get open venues and, and snake lakes the wind does rattle, rattle through them. It's like that a lot at Lindome and or various other places. And I must say, it's a fantastic fishery, um, and Alex, the owner, is a really sound guy. We had a great chat in, in there, 
in the uh, in the shop and you know what he's trying to do here is, is, is brilliant and you know what he's achieving here is brilliant uh, and uh, with that Alyssa's pond that's at the back uh, for juniors which if you've seen the tour of the calf and the uh, shop you'll you'll have seen um, is great there for juniors and getting them in uh, that they net it every year and put fresh F1s in there so that they're, they're easy to catch and you know it's great for getting junior anglers in there thing about these snake lakes I mean you can get you can use um, heavier elastics if you want to and you want to get them in and maybe if you're on a match uh, I'd, I'd be on a pink because um, it's a, a little stronger than this around a 10 um, but if you've got open space either side of you there's nowhere to go but left and right it's um, sometimes just worth it for a little bit of uh, bit of fun it's not gonna break it's got plenty of stretch in it and it's, um, you know, just better than just pulling them in. If you're, if you're out for pleasure, then uh, that's what you want. So I was just about to pot in the lock and that fish took that shallow on the way in <laughs> that, that pellet. <laughs> it's like an eyed. Well, it's on a four mil pellet. Oh, is it an eyed? Oh, a chub. It is a chub, actually. As we know, chub love pellets. And we did say that there was some some chubbies in there, in here. There we go, I love a little beautiful chub. It's getting back in. I've just popped a little bit of that slop in there um, that we said we got at the side of us. What we'll do is go now to how we prepare it and how it looks. Um, and that is just something that you can use to feed um, and works good for creating a cloud. But um, also feeding through the layers so I'll just use it to be a bit of an attractor it will sink but it'll create a haze through the water as it does so straight away that chubber on that um, as it as it sort of dropped through the water the pellet and um, took it straight away and that that's the whole idea of the slot so we'll, we'll cut to that video now Oh, it's some Boland's ground bait now I got given this a little bit uh, ago and I did a video um, on it but it is a really good ground bait for silvers, um, but it does. The reason I want to use it because it's, is because it clouds up, um, which will give me a really good slop. So I've got some water um, in here, and we're just going to add this in it. It takes a lot of water as a ground bait. It has got particles and things in that. So if we go to the bottom, it, it'll sort of show up there. Um, and still attract fish on the bottom. I'm adding it bit by bit, which is 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 a cautious way to do it. So I don't want it too thick, but I want it like a slurry. So obviously it'll absorb over time. But I think out of this bag, I've got around a kilo, and I think it will probably take all that kilo. And we can add some more water to it um, if it needs to. But I feel that that'll be once it's dried up, it's going to be a, a, the right kind of. Uh, texture will it's absorbing it now and it is quite a bread based one so it will create a, a cloud um, and you can see it is literally like a slop that's kind of the consistency that I'd like it to be when it's finished so we're gonna leave it now for a little bit while I just tie the rigs um, and get all that and we'll come back and if it needs any more water then we'll add water if not we'll be good to go and what we'll be doing is putting it in in the pots and just dropping that in the water and it create a haze through the water and um, we're also gonna have the catty so we can fire some four mils over the top 
And fingers crossed we'll have some fish and uh, it's a really good method to try on snake lakes and, and places like this and you know it, uh, it, it, I'm looking forward to it to be honest. So uh, let's uh, get round, I'll get on the box and in the magic of editing you'll, you'll be straight back at the peg ready to go and uh, hopefully we'll have some fish. Right so you've watched the video hopefully that makes some sense about the slop and how it works. Um, I did say uh, that I would show you it when it was finished so I have added some more water to it um, it is it, it, it does set a little bit firmer um, and I've added a little bit of, of water to that to create um, a little bit more of a haze in the water so it's, it's, it's just like a really wet ground bait is effectively what, you, what you're doing with it You don't have to pot it in every time you go over there. Um, if you see the fish swirling for it, then you can. We're not we're not doing it as if we're shallow fishing where we're throwing it in or anything like that. Um, but certainly, if you do see swirls for it, um, then you know you could pot it in every time if if you pick, if you're picking up in the water. But it, that will drop down to the bottom with those pellets, um, and you can just alternate the, that far mill art with obviously the uh, the corn uh, fish, that, one. that one's on the corn always keep an eye on, on the elastic when you you're playing them the good thing is with these the light elastics and these snake legs you can and swim around a little bit. <laughs> this one's certainly swimming around a little bit. It's just a lovely fight on a light, light elastic. For me, it's just what it's all about. What it's all about. It's like a little left one. Oh, it's not. It's a little cat. Trying to get in that. Trying to get underneath the pallet. Trying to get underneath that pallet, desperately. And there he is. Hooked perfectly in the top lip. Right in the top lip, beautiful. Just what you want. And I love the little fish. Let's get him back and have a little look at this rig. Right guys, so the rig. Like I said, it's, I think it's a four to six reactor core orange, um, which is very light of course, but it's a little bit of fun. Um, we've got a Progen 0.3 chimp float on, uh, which is perfect for this kind of shallow water. Um, I've got a little bit of a lash on there of around 12 inches that's because of that toe that's happening uh, and I've got a back shot of number 10 and I've got four number nines just straight underneath the float so I can have an, a natural fall when fishing through the water now it's 013 uh, gem pro line to an 012 gem pro line from progen uh, and that's to a size 16 uh, QM1 uh, with a little Preston band on there um, and I've been alternating between, to be honest, between corn and pellet. Um, most of the fish, and certainly the the two carp that I've had, have both been on corn. Now I've been feeding this slop. And like I said, I've added some some more water to it now. So as you can see, it's pretty grim, to be honest. Um, and I'm not. I'm feeding that every time but I'm only feeding about a third of a pot of pellets maybe every two or three pottings um, so what I'm trying to do is create an environment where the fish there's there's a little bit of something there but not too much but it's the attraction but then there's still not too much there apart from my upbait 
and that's what the plan is really. What we'll do is we'll ship back out and hopefully there'll be some more waiting for us. Right guys, so we've caught a few from over the other side and I've just baited this up and I've just seen a few swirls on it as you see <laughs> there that fish and a bump to that fish just getting in I'm just gonna lower in a piece of corn see where we go from there there we go that didn't take long at all to get into one of those and again they're not they're not massive fishing here but it's just a little bit of fun isn't it and we've just been fit we're fed that exactly the same way as the other side pellets a little bit of slop single corn and bang straight into a fish say exactly the same rig we've just plumbed it and slid the float slightly up Nice little left one. There we go. In the next. Sometimes when you're fishing, it's just about looking around you and that little margin just looked great to have a little bit of bait in it and, I, and it got it were deep enough to could fish in close and there we go the result within minutes so hopefully this video has been helpful to you and uh, you can learn a little bit off it and it's uh, you definitely need to come to Aston Park Fisheries it's such a lovely place and this is just one of, of, of many lakes that you can go on all with different types of fishing so definitely give yourself a chance to come down here and uh, and have some fish uh, and if you want to join us on the Facebook group at Angling For You there's lots of members on there that are willing to help with questions and just post general things that you, uh, you've you been doing or where you've been fishing if you want to go onto the Instagram at Angling Underscore For You and, and have a look at what photos and what we're doing that's fantastic um, and also if you uh, you want to like, share and subscribe that would be, that'd be brilliant it, that really helps us out in uh, growing the group and any other videos you want just have a look through the a uh, Angling For You playlists on the YouTube channel until the next one guys, thank you very much for watching Tight Lines. <laughs>